Hello teachers. Um, the purpose of this video is to walk you through the development of the Guess My Number program. So when I'm writing a new program, what I first like to do is get my thoughts down on paper. Now what I've shown you here is kind of a formal flowchart and that's really not necessary. You can just do um, some very informal um, pen to paper writing out basically just a list of steps um, that our program is going to need to take. So for this particular program, and you can even imagine just playing this game um, unplugged with just another person, um, what those steps would need to be. So first, um, the other person, or in this case the computer, is going to choose a number between 1 and 10, and this is going to be inclusive of those endpoint numbers. Then it will ask the computer, or excuse me, will ask the user for a guess. And then it needs to evaluate, does that user guess match the computer number? If it does, then the user has won, and so that will end the program. You'll just let the user know that he or she has won the game. But if the user guess does not match the computer number, then you need to tell the user that he or she is incorrect, but then we're going to allow them another opportunity to guess. So rather than continue the flowchart down here with another guess and another check of that guess, we've already instituted those steps in our flowchart. So we're just going to kind of rewind back to an earlier spot. Again, we'll ask the user for a guess check to see if it matches. If yes, the user has won. If not, she's incorrect or he is incorrect and we'll go again backward to an earlier step in the process. So again, your flowcharting and, and um, kind of um, rough draft um, of these, these steps does not need to be this formal. We're just trying to get our logic down on paper so that once we move on to the code, we can concentrate on how to translate these steps into code um, rather than having to also concentrate on what our steps will be. So here are our steps that we're going to try to employ with our coding process. So I'm going to come over here and open up um, just a new snap window. And I'm going to walk you through translating that flowchart, those steps in that flowchart, to um, executable um, computer code. So what we're first going to do is um, we're going to drag out one of these when the green flag is clicked. And all that does is kind of get our program started. That means when I can click this green flag up here, that's going to execute any of the commands that are following this block here. So just a way to kind of set things going. So what we're going to do next is, you know, our flowchart said that we should have the computer pick a number between 1 and 10. What we're going to do is create a variable for that value to be stored as. And what that's going to do is allow us to more easily refer to that um, number later because basically we're just giving it a name, right? So we're going to make a variable called um, computer number just to be as descriptive as possible. And we're going to make a second variable called user guess. Now, notice that when I do that, my variables show up here in my variable menu and they have these little check boxes next to them. All those boxes are gonna do, you see if I unclick, what happens is it doesn't display that variable on my screen anymore. Now, of course, when you actually are running the game to play it, you don't want to display the computer number. That'll be cheating, but we're going to leave that up here for now just so that um, we'll have a little bit of help when we get ready to test our code in just a second. All right, so um, again, I'm going to have the computer pick a number. Um, but I'm going to let that number be set to this name computer number. So I'm going to choose this set block. Um, drop down and pick the, the appropriate variable name, which is computer number. And I don't want to set it to a certain number. I want to have the computer choose a number that is between 1 and 10. So I'm going to go over here to my operators. This is kind of like the math menu. And I'm going to have the computer pick a number 
between one and 10. Now this says random and strictly speaking, it's worth pointing out that this is not actually random. It's based on a mathematical algorithm, but it's random enough for our purposes at this point. So after the computer picks a number, it's gonna call that number computer number. Now I want to ask my user to enter their guess. So that's the sensing tab here. I'm gonna ask on the screen for the user to enter a number between one and 10. So after I do that, and so notice it says, and wait, so it's gonna not progress at all in the program until the user actually enters its guess. So once that happens, just like with the computer number, I'm going to set my variable, user guess, to the answer to this question. And the block for answer is just right under here where it says ask. So we're just gonna drag that out and put here. So what's happened so far is that when I click my green flag, I'm gonna have the computer pick a number from one through 10 and whatever number is chosen, I'll call that computer number. I'm gonna ask my user to enter a number between one and 10, wait until they have done so, and then call that entry user guess. Okay, from then on, um, now I'm in the process in my flowchart where I need to check and see if that number um, matches, the, the number that the user has entered matches the computer number. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna have a decision happen here, okay? So if the computer number equals the user guess. All right, so those are underneath my variable menu. So if, um, you know what, I need an equal. I need to say that they're equal first. So if two things are equal, and the two things again are your computer number and your user guess, if those two things are equal, then what we're gonna do is say you win. The game is done. So we'll say you win, your guess matches the computer number. And we can say that for maybe five seconds just to let them know. All right, if it doesn't, then we want to say Your guess is incorrect. Please try again. And just for a couple seconds, because then what it's going to do is dump them back into guessing a number again. So what we'll do is we'll go ahead and ask a second time. Enter a number between 1 and 10, and we're going to wait, and again, we will set user guess to the answer to that question. Now, at this point, what we need to do is have the computer sort of go back and check again to see if the computer number matches the user guess. So we sort of need to stick this if else statement again down here to check the number again to say you win if it matches or to start the process over if it doesn't match. So here's how we're going to do that. I'm going to go to control and I'm going to make a block. This is going to allow me to sort of specify exactly what I want, name it what I want. Okay, so I'm going to call this check guess. And it'll be this, this orange command block. Okay, and what I can do then is I'm going to drag this over.
and I'm going to call that whole process check guess. This is going to be um, beneficial to me for two reasons. Number one, um, when I click apply and OK, I'm going to be able to drag a block over here that says check guess. So it's kind of got all this stuff happening behind the scenes, which is going to make this code a lot easier to read and understand because I don't necessarily need to be able to read through every single thing that's happening. If I know the program works, it will be easier if I can just read through the general processes that are happening without so much concentration on um, the minute details. The other thing that this is going to allow me to do is that, um, see, when I click um, to make a block and I apply that, what happens is down here at, at the bottom of the control tab, that block that I've just made is now available for me to drag out. And what I'm going to do is add that process to the bottom of my else statements. And again, let me explain to you what this is doing. It says, if the computer number equals the user guess, then you win. But if it doesn't, I'm gonna say try again, have the user enter a number, set that number to my variable user guess, and then start this process again. This right here is called recursion. It's just defining this block in terms of itself. And what it's gonna do is kind of scroll me back to the top and start again. And what that allows me to do is to let the user choose as many guesses as he or she wants until the end of the game is reached or until that user um, wins by guessing the computer number. So I'm gonna click apply and okay. And then I'm just going to drag my block over here to the bottom of my row, my list here. And now let's test it. So I'm going to um, click the green flag to get things going. Notice it's saying enter a number between 1 and 10. Now again, I'm going to unclick this variable box next to computer number once I'm satisfied that I'm working. But for now, it's going to help me debug because I can see exactly what the correct number is. So I'm going to guess something that I know is incorrect. So maybe I guess 5 tells me my number is wrong, try again, and allows me to enter a number a second time. So again, let's pick something that's wrong. Maybe six, guess is incorrect, try again. And now let's choose the correct number of three, and I see, oh, I win. So now that I've run through my program and tested it, made sure that it works, that it repeats, allowing me to guess if I'm incorrect, that it does tell me that I've won if I'm correct, then I feel okay about taking this off and running through the program just a second time to make sure. So now I really am truly playing the game. If I guess a four, notice my user guess um, variable operates up here, it changes. Um, that was incorrect, so I'll choose again a six. And still no, so maybe be a little bit more systematically here. And no, nope, still not, so three. And if I click this, I see it does in fact match the computer number. So I hope that was helpful for you and happy coding.